thank you all so much for coming this afternoon. Uh, what a treat to celebrate this closing weekend of Julie's wonderful installation as part of the Art League platform series. Before we start, we want to say a special thank you uh, to the City of Houston through the Houston Arts Alliance and the Mid-America Arts Alliance. And their special funding is what made this program possible. And this is a, a wonderful sort of happy outgrowth of COVID in terms of bringing Art League to the outside of the building and making a space where people can encounter the work outside. Um, so many of you I know are already dedicated Julie fans. I won't spend time with a dedicate a long inter introduction, but I just wanted to thank you for coming and to welcome Julie to talk about her work. And we'll have questions after. Thanks. Mm -hmm. um, I was trying to figure out where to start with this since we have a little bit of time and um, when I was invited to do this I was trying to think like oh what am I gonna do um, that would be silly to do like because I love painting trees and I love nature like it but it's already outside so I was trying to think of something else but then I was like mm, I cannot resist the pull I can't deny it, so I ended up um, uh, choosing a subject that I have been wanting to paint for a long time, which is this section of this park that I walk in like a couple times a week um, called Doss Park in Aldi by my house. And most like public parks are just like, they'll have like a trail um, that with like fields. And this one actually has a section with like a forest, um, just kind of like, they don't mow it. So it just kind of, it's just filled with like just random invasive and native and all mixed together, not like anything fancy. And um, um, so I've been walking there for like, you know, on and off my whole life because that's where I grew up. And so um, just watching the seasons change and the colors change depending on what time I go, usually in the morning and the sun coming in. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna do that. And um, since it's big, it's a little more like immersive, which is the, you know, close to the experience of that I have when I'm walking through that, through that forest, little tiny little forest, it's like a little section. And, um, but how I got to this, I'll just give you all kind of like a build up and I, I don't want to start from like, I was a baby, but I am going to kind of start from there, <laughs> which is like, I, um, I was reading in this, uh, my favorite book about drawing, The Natural Way to Draw, I really recommend it by uh, Kimon Nagleides. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but it's a great book. And he has an exercise in there, it's like 100 years old, but it's really relevant and interesting and totally changed the way I work. And there's an exercise about like, um, every day when you, um, at the end of the day, do a small gesture drawing of something you saw that day to help your memory. And um, his drawing is all about memory. As soon as you look away from your subject, you have to remember what you saw and also composition and all that. So um, I started thinking about memory a lot when I was doing those. And I, I was like, what was my first memory, my first visual memory? And when I was, uh, I don't know, maybe two, I remember seeing like the little like dust motes in the sunlight in, in like, I think the laundry room, wherever we were living. And I just thought it was so beautiful the way the light like the golden light like hitting that you know dust and I don't know if y'all can remember your first like visual memory it's usually something like it's very um seductive and just because you're a baby because you're little you don't you don't really know what it means you're just so like transfixed by it and um so I started like seeking out um those moments in my daily life that kind of made me feel like toddler brain like like I'm not trying to make meaning out of this I'm just like ah pretty you know and that's how it sort of evolved and I've always kind of like kind of it kind of became like a diary visual diary in a way and I started doing that way back in high school when I my, my art teacher would be like you just have to keep a sketchbook I don't care what you put in it you just have to turn it in every week so I started like documenting my life and current events and just um, collecting images from the things I was going through. 
and that kind of kept going on throughout my life I always had like a sort of way to like document what I was experiencing and this was just like a natural progression from that anyways so I was doing them as digital drawings because I wanted a way to like keep making images without having to have like a chunk of studio time where you have to have like five six hours you know so I was like oh in bed about to go to sleep and I'll just do like a quick digital drawing on my iPad and I just started saving the files and they just became like a way for me to experiment with composition color and also practice memory like remembering things but then to my surprise it also turned into kind of a like a meditative practice where um, in the day as I was looking for these images, looking for these moments, it was a way for me to like be more present and look for um, like an aesthetic experience throughout my day. And it's kind of weird to like, I'm very much interested in like the sublime and art and nature and kind of that feeling when you look at nature and you feel kind of small and nature feels kind of big, but that's very comforting, you know? And uh, so, um, looking for those little moments, whether it was like on the side of the freeway or in that little like dinky park that I walk in or just anywhere, not having to go to like a national park or like one of the seven wonders of the world, but just like on my way to the grocery store or to Joe B's to like, you know, to work on my regular routines. I really, I really like was able to kind of like get a lot of, uh, uh, peace from that and helped me with my like anxiety and stress and everything so doing the drawing now are, are sort of like a requirement now it helps me like stay present and stay like um um keep me looking throughout my day um for that kind of like calming moment or very resonant pregnant moment that um, I think most people are just too busy to really spend time with. So it's like my way of like capturing that and like holding on to that. And, and all the images that I do are like people, things that people are very familiar with. Um, so, but they maybe, they've all seen them in their life too, but maybe they've never like had the time or, you know. And um, so it's partly that, so it's my memory. So. It's, not from observation it's my memories of the light and the patterns and the textures and the lines that i would see on my walks and then it's also um a partly kind of a a mesh of two series so the memory drawings and then the other series is a fields series and um that also started like when i was really little my dad would draw with me and he's very much like into hatching he's a hatcher like the way he shades is just hatching 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 so I would want him to draw with me and I would want him to draw like cartoon characters and but he wouldn't he'd just be like Ch -ch 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 -ch. and I was like what what is cool about this like why is he doing this it just stuck in my head because that's how he draws and um, I realized like um, that was like imprinted on me and um, when I was uh, when I used to live in Denton Y'all know there's like, it's a it's in the prairie zone where there's like a lot of tall grasses. I was on the side of the, like waiting for a red light next to a freeway again. And there was this tall grass and it was like, you know, looking like ocean waves, like undulating, you know. And I really don't see grass, I see lines and lines that like come together and come apart, come together and come apart. And it made me think about those hatching lines. So I started doing like, just drawings of like lines and patterns that go from organic that that are repeated but they're also organic in the way they change and um, I was also thinking about like Tsai Twombly's uh, you know the big handwriting paintings he has at the Manil um, how it's like a repetitive like hatching or swirls just kind of like almost just a repetitive meditative movement anyway so that series was uh, just really just way for me to, to study pattern and to study mark making and to study color as well. And first it was like greens and then it was reds and then it became more about the movement of the lines. They were like swirling and they were falling and they were like, you know, um, just doing different things. 
But basically, it's like my version of a color field painting with like texture and lines and color and um, references to the to the visible world, the visual world, but not exactly. And so that's what this one ended up being a little more of a mixture. So it became more of a kind of a motif rather than like a exact memory. It's more like a motif of the patterns and the textures and the lights and the colors that, that I saw in, on my walks. And so the reason why, I, and, and so the thing about it, why I'm, I'm happy that it, I got a chance to do it really big is like you said, like I said, when you're walking through there and you're completely surrounded by color, light, texture, pattern, and it becomes like this, just this huge, like overwhelming, like, you know, forest bath. And I, and that's kind of the feeling I wanted to kind of, to, to get. Um, the other thing I was going to mention, uh, some other people that I, that I was looking at is, um, I really, I really do love, uh, Carmen Herrera's work and it seems like a stretch, but I love the geometric abstraction. I love like Latin American geometric abstraction and I love it when nature like borders on the geometric and so um, I think it's like a interesting mix of organic and geometric in the pattern and the line and stuff and it, and it kind of becomes like a, it's not minimalist but it is minimalist in that you kind of your brain kind of blurs it all together in one. and so this for this piece specifically I'll just talk about like the process so originally I had planned to do it on like metal panels because I wasn't sure how the canvas would, would hold up and uh, they I couldn't get them to stick stick to any kind of uh, to any kind of backing. So this is all like my this is my research. This is how I research, <laughs> you know. So I was trying out different materials and I was just thinking about like um, kind of like a sail, you know. Uh, again thinking about the Medeals uh, ceiling, the Cy Thompson Gallery ceiling. And so that's how I uh, came to this, but it's actually a drop cloth, like, <laughs> so I just um, uh, primed it and hemmed it and then and then worked on it in my studio. And put like tons of uh, gel medium over it, <laughs> like a whole huge gallon, so. Any questions? Is that a good amount of time? I don't know. Yeah, okay.
like keep it kind of like rooted in the visual, like like right, so, so it's people. Just, it's still realistic, right? But at the same time, you know, and so you can see that there's depth there. It's not yeah. Really flat. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, th and that's like really important to me. Like I want people to look at it and see plants and trees. I don't want them it d to actually be like completely geometric. Um, I think like the drawing aspect, because I draw those things, I, I, I kind of think about the way they, the lines that they're made of, you know, like, and the patterns of, like each tree, if you look at the, like the branches and the leaves, it's like its own like repeating pattern and shapes. So to try to like memorize those and put those in there, but also um, I use like glazes uh, and I would like tint the glazes to make certain areas like recede and come forward. So like dark values tend to recede and brighter values tend to come forward. And um, like small textures tend to come forward, bigger shapes tend to recede. So that, that's pretty much how I do that. agrees it's beautiful or when you see someone like post on their social media like they went to you know some really beautiful place and it's like it's pretty but it's like so expectedly pretty and it's like postcard pretty or stock photograph pretty you know what I mean and so like it doesn't really do anything like it doesn't really like I think part of the sublime for me in like the like urban environment is the surprise that you have because you're not expecting it like everybody goes on vacation with the um, 
like the aesthetic mindset of like I'm gonna see something gorgeous, I'm gonna see something beautiful, I paid all this money, I'm here, I'm gonna see something amazing and life changing. But like can you leave your house on a Wednesday with that mindset? You know what I mean? And can you like drive by all your regular and that's another thing I was gonna say is like I don't like going to new parks either. Like I like going to the same place every time because I like to see how like one area changes. And it really changes, literally, like I'll do one lap and I'm like, I'm gonna get a picture of that on my second lap and this clouds cover and the light looks different. And so if I don't take that picture that moment, it's gone. Or if I don't, you know, make a mental note that moment of what I wanna draw, it's gone. And so I'm always comparing, how did it look like two months ago? How did it look like an hour ago? How, you know, and um, it's, it's a little bit weird, but it's like, teaches you to like oh you see something beautiful and compelling like get it now because it's not gonna last and also it's a little bit about like grief and death in a way because like stuff is constantly dying you know what I mean like not just physically dying but like moments are always dying and always passing and so like um, part of that is appreciating that moment you know instead of just saying taking it for granted oh uh, I'll, I'll look at that later because a lot of my work is also like from photographs you know so I, I do like especially with my husband smash Monty we'll go shoot and we'll take pictures and I'll use a lot of those as references as well and that's so much about like that moment never being and never happening again and so when you like experience grief like major grief in your life it's like you learn how to appreciate like every moment with somebody and that's kind of the same thing. Like I want to develop a relationship with this place and appreciate how every day it looks different, you know?